You get five players, four players scoring in double figures, almost five, and you limit Memphis to 28% shooting. In your eyes, what was that? Was that the key to the victory today? Yes, I, I thought our defense was superb. I thought we had some key defensive possessions. Uh, Memphis, they're they're big, they're physical. Uh, their guards, and they're not just big in the post. Their guards, their guards are big. They're six foot, six one. You know, a couple of their guards, and they came out red hot at the beginning of the game and took it to us. Hit three quick threes. They got up. Uh, we tightened up our defense. Both teams had a little lapse in the second quarter. It wasn't exactly the highest s scoring quarter we've seen in a while. But then you come out the third quarter, and that quarter was a game of runs. When we come out, have a run. Then Memphis goes on a run. Then we go on a run. And we've been we've been fortunate. The second half has, for the most part, has been pretty good to us. And, and to be honest, I think you know, I think both teams were dead tired at the end. But as I've told our team, if we're both tired, I'm going to put our money on us because. I feel like our endurance is very good, and, and that's something that I think takes over at the end of ball games. And I felt like that took over today. Specific to your defense, Mariah Rouser scored 10 of Memphis's first 15 points, all in the first quarter, and then only had six the rest of the way. Did you change what you were doing specifically to her, or your team, your team defense, your perimeter defense? Well, we did tighten up on her a little bit, but she's also. I, I feel like she's a streaky shooter. Uh, I feel like she can just nail them, nail them, nail them, but then she can miss a couple. And, and you know, she, 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 she hit a couple, she hit in a couple nice threes at the beginning, and she hit a couple in our face. But we did tighten up our defense a little bit and, and made her give it up. And, you know, I thought when they went inside, I thought our post players did a heck of a job of doubling down on their post players and, and, and doubling. I thought we rotated well out of it. and. And you know, even though they got um, 71 shots on, on us, thankfully we kept them to 28% shooting. So I, I thought we had a heck of a defensive effort tonight. They took 71 shots, your team took 47. Have you ever had that much of a deficit in shots and come out with a win? <laughs> yeah, I can't remember that uh, being such a big difference, but I will tell you this, uh, Memphis did shoot a lot of outside jumpers. And if you look back, there were a lot of long rebounds today. A lot of long rebounds, uh, and that's where a lot of those offensive rebounds came from. There was a lot of tipped rebounds today as well. You play today without Stephanie Collins. <coughs> Alicia, how does that affect you the most inside? Um, Speaking of Mike, please. Thank you. Oops. Um, I guess, well, usually I play the four, so of course today I had to play a lot of five, which it puts me inside a lot more. So, I mean, it worked today because obviously I got so many easy layups, but it just changes my game because I'm not so much cutting. I have to more post up and it's against, you know, Steph probably would have taken the number 33, their big girl, but I had two today. And it took me a while to adjust, but I think I did eventually, so yeah. She likes it because she got to play more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, she got to play more. So did Deja Thomas, who had 29 minutes came within two points and a rebound of a double-double, also four block shots. Was this her best game, and, and what does Deja add uh, on the front line for you? Um, I think she had a really good game today. Like, I think she just got confidence knowing that, you know, there wasn't a backup post, um, so she could play more, and she, I think she played a bit more freely too. And she got, she got easy buckets, she like made her easy shots, and then I like trying to encourage her too, and she had a really good game, so hopefully she carries this forward. The teams combined for 13 points in the second quarter. Was that shots weren't falling, or was it strong defense on both teams? I, I thought for us, I thought we were hurt, we were taking quick shots. We were in a hurry in our offense. Their pressure kind of, and we talked about it during a number of timeouts, is just trying to make them play defense. We knew uh, we probably wouldn't be rotating a lot of players in and out. But for me, as a coach, I wanted our kids to understand. Uh, we were going to play. We were going to play uh, seven players. You know, we played seven players. So when you don't sub as much, you can't be going up and down consistently like that. I rather, I rather run that type of offense a little more in the second half and be smart about it. And, and that's what frustrated me the most about that second quarter. Thankfully, Memphis wasn't on fire either that quarter, so it worked out. In the first half, Memphis made three of five three-pointers in the second half. 
one of 13, and that was with one of your best perimeter defenders, Gabby Wilkins, carrying three fouls. What did you change with your perimeter defense? Well, we changed our defenses a couple of times, but we just we just tightened up a little bit, and and we mirrored Hearn, uh, who's their three-point specialist, and has has played pretty well against us in the past. And you know, she, you know, in the fourth quarter when the game is close, Hearn is going to take a lot of shots. So you have to mirror her. You got to face guard. We face guarded her at times, and and just closed up our defense, threw a, you know, a little junk defense at him at times, and. Sometimes when, when you're looking for two specific players and they're guarded tightly, it, it makes a team second guess what they're doing. And when they did throw it inside, we had some nice double teams, some, some nice rotations. So I thought our girls played a very smart defensive game. You led the way with 19 points, but three of your teammates scored in double figures and Deja added nine. How much easier is your life when your teammates are scoring so that, teammates, that the opponent can't? double up on you? I mean, it's so much easier. Um, obviously, that's what we need to win games. We can't just have one person scoring. And then, as you said, like it does, it makes the, like the defense can't double team one person because we're just going to kick it out to the next and they're going to make the shot. So I think it just makes defense, um, defending us as a team a lot harder for the, for the other team. And I think a lot of girls stepped up today, especially Deja. So that was really good. Deja, I, I, I agree with what Alicia said. It's uh, probably out of anybody on our team, Deja probably made the most out of Steph not playing today with their minutes because you know, Alicia usually plays a, a good amount of uh, minutes out there. But this, I think, I'm hoping as a coach, I look at this and go, God, I hope this is a breakthrough game for Deja. I hope that maybe this game will give her confidence to come in and play like this every time. Because one of the areas, if, I can, if we can get Deja to have her motor run like that, the whole time she's in, both offensively and defensively, she creates a, she creates a lot of problems because she can cover, just like Gabby, she can cover a lot of ground. She's, she's good at double teaming. Uh, I thought Alicia and Deja worked very well together today. And, and she also, she can take people off the dribble. So both, you got both Alicia and Deja who can take people off the dribble. So I'm hoping from my standpoint, I'm hoping this game gave her confidence. So does she get more minutes once you get your full front line back? Well, you know, she earned she earned some minutes today, didn't she? We'll we'll find out. How was this performance as a as preparation for Wednesday with Tulane for either of you? Go ahead, Alicia. Um, I think just like when we get on a roll, we get confident. So I mean, any win's a good win, and then especially like knowing we can compete with people in our conference, and I think Tulane are right there with us too. So we've got to get them. But I think we're on a roll. We're feeling confident. We know that we have multiple people who can score. So hopefully we just carry that confidence into the Tulane game. You've won three of your last four. You came back from behind today. You came back against Houston. Games that maybe last year's team wouldn't have rallied to come back. Why is this year's team different? I don't want to make a habit of coming from behind because it's very stressful. But we seem to play with a sense of urgency when uh, we're behind. And, and this team actually, the thing that I like about them is they don't lose their composure. You know, we've, we've, you know, we've made some, still some, some mistakes and try to be in a hurry in that. But we just, there's something about even our defense when we're behind. It's like we, we tighten it up, and, and as I said, I don't want to make a habit of it, but I think when you're in this conference, I mean, every game's going to be tight. You look at, you know, you look at the, the one beside South Florida, the game we lost to Tulsa, a two-point game. You know, think about how many close games that we've had. So the one thing I can say, at least they're prepared for close games, and they know a lot of the things we want to run because we've had so many close games.